You're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plots TV Africa. Now, our first major conversation this morning is about inflation. Nigeria's inflation has slowed for a fifth straight month to 17.01% in August. It fell from 17.38% in the previous month. And this simply means that the prices of commodities decreased slightly in August compared to July. Food price inflation was 20.3% in the month under review, while core inflation, which excludes prices of food, fell to 13.41%. The rise in the food index was caused by an increase in prices of bread, cereals, milk, cheese, eggs, oils and fats. And that's according to the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. We have two economists joining us this morning. Uh, Shegu Shopitan is joining us via Zoom and Gospel Obile is on the phone. Um, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. Okay. Um, Mr. Shopito, I want to... Good morning. To, yes. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to begin with Mr. Shopito and then over to um, Mr. Obele to tell us what it means for the MBS to say that our annual inflation has, you know, dropped to 17.01%. Okay, so um, thanks for having me and good morning again. So, so the, the implication of this basically is that for, to the layman, it means that the rate at which prices of um, goods and services that they pay for um, increases is slowing down. So <laughs> sometimes when, when you think about that, you know, so you hear that um, inflation rate has gone down from 17.5 or 17 point, uh, you know, 17 or 17.7 or whatever it is to 17.01. Uh, the tendency would be to begin to celebrate as, oh, prices are coming down. Well, hello, no, prices are not coming down. What happened is the rate at which prices of goods and services are going up has reduced. Mm. So it's no longer increasing at the rate it was increasing before, but it's still increasing. You know? okay. So I think it's important to just note that. Um, and, 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 and what I'm saying is, you know, I'm sure it's obvious to the average Nigerian, because you you know you know you know what you pay for the things that you buy, and you know what you paid last month, um, and you know what you paid in December, you know. So prices are still going up, but the rate of increase is slowing down. It is good news, you know, because for for the rates to to continue to drop, the rate of increase continue to drop. One can only hope that that trend is maintained, so that um, the impact on the um, purchasing power of the average Nigerian will, will be mitigated or moderated a bit. Okay. So as it stands now, what this means is that hopefully the Nigerian, the average Nigerian has a little, just a little bit more to spend on the things that he's um, buying than he would have last month. But the, the difference is marginal. So it's not something that anybody um, is going to notice at the moment mm. until we begin to see significant um, changes in these numbers. And, and I think the central bank governor also echoed this. Um, their expectation and their, 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 their objective is to bring the inflation rate significantly lower than what it is now at a faster pace. So, you know, for me, it's obvious that more still needs to be done by the monetary authorities um, right. to achieve that. Right. Mr. Obele, um, do you think this is good news for Nigeria's economy? Um, yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. I, I think it comes with mixed feelings because, um, yes, it's slowing down, but um, at a very ridiculously slower rate than expected. And that's because when you talk about inflation in Nigeria, you're looking at four major dynamics. You're looking at the structural dynamics input. You're looking at the behavioral dynamics input. You're also looking at the social economy, as it were, you know, and all that, and then the institutional bit of things. Now, if you look at what all these these four items contribute you know, in the long to medium term, you realize that it's sort of recycling the same issues that are reinforcing inflation or inflationary pressure on the Nigerian economy. So until the basics are dealt with, you know, around the structural things, around how our, our consumer behavioral patterns, all right, changes over time, and generally around how institutions are trying to use policy to deal with 
structural issues, which in this case is a very, very, very clear misalignment. All right. Until those things begin to change, we may not see a significant drop in the inflationary numbers. Let's not forget also that you may have heard that inflation is dropping by 1% or 0.31%. But technically, in, in real-time basis, the price of food is skyrocketing on a daily basis. And that's also because there are deeper issues around the inflationary basket and um, the questions around do we need to review the inflationary bud, uh, basket for us to be able to capture close to real-time inflationary figures. Because in, the, in real-time inflationary figures, the inflationary position in Nigeria is very much higher than what you currently have now, right? So it's 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 these are deeper questions that I don't think we're ready for technically. Okay, um, um, I'm going to go back to Shagun Shopita um, and uh, you know ask if you can in any way you know share with us what you think the CBN has done right to keep it on a steady decline, as has uh, been stated. Um, are there certain things that you've noticed that they have continued to, you know, impute, you know, to make it continue to decline? And is there a way that we can maintain this trajectory? Yeah, um, I think the most um, important measure that the CBN took was to hold the monetary policy rate um, constant for as long as they have. Um, especially given that we are just coming out of a recession. I mean, that's important. So, um, traditionally, when you're trying to stimulate growth because you've had a depression or a recession, as the case may be, um, what you do is that you want more uh, supply of money in the system so that banks can give credit um, and therefore, you know, drive, drive growth. And in order to do that, what you typically will do will be to drop your monetary policy rates so that more funds are available in the banking system and then the banks can, can, can lend. Um, but what they've done is um, resisted the temptation to do that um, so that uh, inflation can be, can be tamed a bit. Um, the, the, the flip side of that coin will be if you wanted inflation to really um, decline, then you actually increase the monetary policy rate. So this has been um, the main battle and the main debate at every MPC meeting that has held in the last uh, nine months or thereabouts since since we slipped into recession and since we came out um, um, early this year. Um, so I think that's a good measure on their part, um, but clearly, you know, more needs to be done. Um, I think like um, Gospel has said, uh, some of these things are really uh, traditional um, economic or monetary management policies, and we may need to do more than that if we want to see the kind of impact that, you know, for instance, that the central bank governor has indicated that they would like to see. So, but so far, as far as that goes, I think they've done um, a pretty decent job, at least in ensuring that inflation continues to drop. All right, Mr. Billy, do you agree? Sorry, I didn't get the question. I'm asking, do you agree, you know, that that has been, you know, a, a great move by the CBN and um, a lot more needs to be done? Or, or would, you, would you say that the CBN has maybe done it a little different? Uh, well, um, to be very honest with you, um, the current state and the complexity of the Nigerian economy has made it such that um, factors contributing to this inflationary convention we are having has gone beyond the purview of a central bank, all right? So you have an issue where there is a gross level of fiscal indiscipline, all right? Um, lack of willingness to build the right infrastructure, political um, uh, um, um, indecisiveness, sort of, you know? And then you have high-level cost of governance and all these dynamics that have affected economic management from the fiscal end. Now, the CBN is, is found itself in a position where they have to manage for the excesses of the fiscal side, as well as do its job as a monetary policy institution. All right, there's almost entirely nowhere in the world where you have, yeah, there's always some form of trade off between monetary and fiscal. All right, they're always finding ways to align. But you realize that the for, for economies are really advanced now working, the fiscal side are currently doing their own bit. Then the monetary side are currently doing their own bit. So they now find a place to align and improve on things. So, but what you find here is a gross opposite. The central bank is in a fix because they're trying to over, overdo all right, its function in a sense. And that's because of the fiscal discipline you have. So I agree with Mr. Shagwin when it comes to 
The central bank at the moment has tried to keep things constant when it looks at when you look at it from an NPR perspective. And they are trying to do a lot of uh, policy support programs in the agricultural space. But you realize that in as much as those things have been in place, the, the real time, now my emphasis is on real time because I have a I have a personal bias for real time inflation, what it really is. Because I don't think our inflationary basket really captures um, the, the true story. Can, 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 you, sense, share, right? can you share with everything. us, so, uh, Mr. Obele, can you share a little you know, more with us on your real-time analysis on what Nigeria's inflation is? Well, uh, no particular figure in mind, but I know that it's way higher than that, than what you currently have now. Because um, if you look at the current inflationary basket, it does not capture for items that are, that are high-pressure points in, in the science, all right, in the Nigerian economy, such as, you know, um, technological devices, phones, gadgets, you know, all of this advanced use of uh, advanced consumption habits that consumers have um, are, are come to interact with. And you also have how, how food dynamics are, are changing over time, all right, in terms of prices of food and all of that. And don't forget also that the current inflationary basket is such that the, 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 the NBS collects data from the same pool of people and the same pool of items every month for the past 10 to 15 years, all right? If you look at the, the U.S. Bureau of, of, of Statistics, you see that, that that pool of information changes about every five to 10 years because technological and um, globalization advancements are reorganizing or redistributing that pool, all right? So if, if, if we choose to take a, 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 a sincere look at the situation, realize that real-time inflation it's way higher than what we are currently reporting because it's a structural issue around how we're even reporting inflation in the first place. But what I'm trying to say in trying to answer your question, number one, the CBN is in fix and can only do little. All right? We need to get back to the real structural work of enabling fiscal policy as well as even redefining the inflationary basket to really capture the state of things. This is the reason why the average Nigerian cannot see the impact of current CBN policies on the price of food or on the price of the purchasing power of their incomes and all of that. So uh, in terms of real-time inflation, it's way higher. I can't put it perspective because to be right now because when you want to go that route, all right, it's much more complex um, modeling and all of that, which I have not been able to uh, put together at, for now at this stage. But I know it's way higher in terms of uh, 21st century development economics. Okay, okay. Mr. Shopito, um, just on the back of what Mr. Obele is, is saying, you know, that um, when we look at this annual inflation, it seems like we have something to celebrate. When we compare the 2021 figures to last year, it seems like, you know, this is declining and it's good news. But the month-on-month -month inflation doesn't seem to be um, slowing down anyway. And the real-time inflation, what people see on ground, when the market woman goes to the market, you know, the figures keep going high. I spoke to some market people yesterday and they were telling me the cost of chicken, a carton of chicken that they buy to make shawarma last month, two months ago, has just been on a steady you know, dick increase. So could you help us break this down for the common man's understanding? What are the determinants of inflation? Um, in, 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 in the case of Nigeria in particular, um, you have to, there's no way you can run away from the food the conversation around food. Um, so um, a survey released by the NBS um, 2019, I think it was, also um, 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 indicated this. So Nigerians spent about 22 trillion around food alone, um, which represented about 60%. I just rounded it up, it was about 57 point something, 60% of their income on food. Um, so <laughs> as far as the Nigerian situation is concerned. Um, a lot of what is driving inflation revolves around what's happening with agriculture, um, um, infrastructure, um, the exchange rate, very, very critical, um, because as we all know, we import almost everything um, that we use in Nigeria, apart from basic food staples, um, even things like rice, um, which the government would like us to believe is, you know, probably predominantly produced locally now, in truth, um, still finds its way into the country. The imported one still finds its way into the country, and we know how much we eat rice. Um, chicken, you know, like you just mentioned, poultry and all those things are imported. Um, so the exchange rate is a major um, factor in our case, um, in the inflation conversation. Um, so th there's a lot of things, you know, 
um, playing around each other. When I spoke about infrastructure, for example, um, for the food that is produced locally, we know that most of the food that we eat down south, for example, um, comes from the north. Um, um, and even if even if you take the north-south um, transportation logistics um, 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 issue out of the equation, from the farms, even in the south, down to the markets, you have to transport these goods. And I tell you what, um, the cost of food that you get at the market, that last price that you pay as a consumer, um, consists more about 80% of that cost is logistic costs, mm -hmm. not the actual cost of production of the material that you are buying itself. So all of these factors um, come to play when you talk about inflation um, in Nigeria. Um, so, so you know, so so there, there is a need to address those fundamental issues if we're to um, significantly tame inflation to the point where we're talking in single digit terms, really, because that's where we need to be. We need to be in the lower single digit for us to um, really um, have a situation where, indeed, um, um, we can say that we have tamed inflation and our economy, uh, people are feeling the impact of growth of the economy. Until we have single-digit inflation, whatever um, you know, economic growth you have would always be wiped away by, mm -hmm. uh, by the wide um, inflationary trend that we have. So, so that means we can't exactly take away um, insecurity from the conversation. You know, Absolutely. Uh, so basically you're saying that if we're able to solve our security challenge, um, also infrastructure challenge, you know, that, that you've mentioned, Absolutely. fixing our roads. And, you know, there's, there's little or no challenge regarding logistics, transportation of food items from one part of the country to another. The prices will be driven down and the inflation um, rates will, will de decline as well. Absolutely. So, for example, so two things. Um, in terms of the security issue, um, large swaths of arable land in places like Katsina State, in places like Sokoto State, in places like Benue State, Plateau State, Nasarawa State, are no longer accessible to farmers. Um, for them to, to, to go to the farm, they must have security, and the, the military simply can't do that. They, 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 are, under, they are too straight thin. Um, then on the transport side, um, for us to see a significant drop in transport logistic costs, we must have a, real, a functional rail system. It's just there is no other way because our roads are bad. And even if the roads were good, it's not efficient transporting, um, you know, the volume of goods that we need to move from across, you know, the country by road. It just simply isn't efficient. So, and we know how long it will take to develop, you know, rail infrastructure and all of that. We can see what the government is doing, but, you know, clearly, clearly it is simply under-resourced. It can't, they don't have enough money to do what needs to be done. And then that expands the conversation to bigger issues of, you know, government revenues and how to expand that and all of that. So it's all intertwined. All right. Gospel Obili, I'm bringing you back in. And I want you to respond to um, one of the concerns that I've seen online with regards to uh, Nigeria's inflation. Um, this person here says, and I think, it, you know, it's, it, it's most of the um, thoughts of Nigerians that I shared in this uh, message. It says, dollar exchange rate, 562, as of this morning, might be higher in Nigeria, but headline inflation is going down while food inflation and dollar rate are blowing up. Um, and then, of course, the person questions, you know, the, the uh, CBN and the NBS uh, report of uh, reducing or uh, declining inflation. So quickly respond to that. Um, is it possible that we can have the exchange rate blowing up and food inflation also, you know, um, increasing while having the headline inflation going down at the same time? Uh, well, um, I, I think that bothers the, one of the reasons why consumers or the average Nigerian will always um, come off like that would be the fact that um, a lot of times our reports in this part of the world doesn't tell the real story or the true story, and which is why I started um, outrightly from the conversation earlier that there's, a, there's, a, there's an argument also to improve the inflationary basket. Now, that may not seem like an argument everybody's having. We're just looking at by one percentage has it gone up, by one percentage has it gone down, and you know, just and that, that's a bit we need to move away from those arguments, you know, for things to get better in the sense. All right, so, so there is a wide gap between what the methodology around the inflationary reports and 
what the average Nigerian is currently facing. Okay, in some parts of the country right now, the cost of fuel has gone up as high as two fifty naira in some parts of the country. So what that means is that I will also feed into the cost of logistics and also the prices of food. All right. So, so and if it, even if you look at the inflationary numbers that are said to be going down, they are not going down by wide margin or by significant margins. It's just maybe zero point something or one point something percent. And for me, that's not a significant growth. And it's so it's to tell you that there is some form of um, um, basics or real issues that are currently ongoing in the Nigerian economy that needs to be fixed or dealt with. And like Mr. Shelbo had mentioned, uh, the exchange rate and all of these dynamics are issues that borders on the structural deficits. So what the central bank and the federal government is trying to do is to use policies to solve structural issues, but rather we need to use structural solutions for structural problems. And one in that, number one, particular country is a function of the level of that country. So you can't expect your productivity base to be low, or you can't expect your consumption base to be higher than your productivity base, and then expect your currency or to be to be to be uh, uh, to be appreciating. It's not possible. It doesn't work anywhere in the world. For currency appreciation, there must be, you know, a fastly increase in a, a fast increase in in, in uh, baseline productivity of that economy versus all right consumption productivity of that economy. So these are the different nuances, all right, that plays out. Gospel Obele, can you hear us? In how um, exchange rates are, are going, and it's quite, it's really a bad situation, and how all right, we'll affects, see. all right, um, uh, the cost that's currently happening in the market. All right, seems we're struggling we measure it. a little with um, Mr. Obele's uh, sound. Hello, are you there? Can you hear me, please? Uh, yes, we can now. Go ahead. Yes, so we need to close the gap between what's currently happening in the market and how we are currently measuring for all right inflation and all of that exchange dynamics a function of productivity and production and consumption nigeria on that scale will be production so the currency will always be at the mercy all right of that dynamics the more we consume the more the weaker the currency because we because we don't have a productive base to grow the, the, the power of that currency and all of that. If the exchange rates were a lot more better than it was right now, we would have also seen some form of positive effect on the inflationary numbers or the inflationary trends. All right, so we can't say we have not seen a significant drop in inflation because the core economics around the inflation in sense. For instance, one of the major reasons why um, inflation is also high is because there is cost push. Cost push simply means that the cost of price goes up, fuel goes up, and, 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 and that permeates through the cost of logistics and all that, and we see that uh, prices are increasing in the market. So we need to deal with this from an end-to-end -end value chain standpoint, as well as revisiting what we're seeking to measure in the marketplace uh, from an inflational basket uh, uh, point of view. Uh, Mr. Shopiton, can you put a, an increase in exchange rate side by side with a decline in um, um, uh, inflation? Um, I mean, yes, you, you can because of the lagging effect in tracking of, you know, these statistics. So remember that what we're seeing now, um, the inflation figures that we're seeing today um, are a result of events that happened maybe in terms of policy initiatives and all of that, a result of e events that happened maybe six months ago. Um, so, uh, I, I was actually going to bring this point up, you know, I, I made a mental note to ensure that I said this, that um, yes, the authorities, you know, have every right to say, oh, inflation is going down and they're happy, but, you know, it's almost certain that this trend is going to be reversed, yeah, probably before the end of the year, because of what's happening with the exchange rate, you know, because there, there is a, there is a, you know, as has been, you know, over, over repeated and over said, um, there's a direct connection between um, the exchange rate of our currency and local prices of goods and services simply because we don't produce enough. We don't produce what we consume. Um, so 
because we're importing so many things, it, both in terms of goods and services, whatever happens to the exchange rate affects the local prices of goods and services, and it's just a natural connection. So inflation rates would likely go back on the upward trend um, as the year progresses. You know, so I foresee maybe you might drop below the 17%, um, um, you know, um, year on year uh, uh, region, maybe by next month. But as you approach the end of the year and cross into the earlier part of next year, we'll probably see a reversal in the strength. And the key determinant to this will be that exchange rate is uh, counterbalancing whatever else is happening on the security front and on the infrastructure front and all of that. So, yeah, it's possible. And to the comments that you, you made earlier, you know, that somebody read, um, I think it's important to get people to understand that uh, these numbers are developed based on standard models that are monitored by um, a, a wide range of stakeholders. So it's very, very difficult to cook them up. Whatever numbers you are seeing are reflecting what's happening in reality. But whether it's reflecting them in real time, as, as uh, Mr. Obele has been saying, is a completely different conversation. So, so they're not cooked up numbers, but they might not necessarily agree with what's happening today because there's a lagging effect also in, in the numbers that you that you do see. Okay. Um, so I've heard Mr. Obele speak and he's mentioned the inflationary basket about three, four times. And when we look at how the um, International Monetary Fund talks about measuring inflation, it's about tracking that inflation basket. So can we talk about this and break this down? What is the inflationary basket? And um, how do we, you know, add more things to that basket, consider more things that, you know, the household buys um, to see if we can get a better um, analysis, a better measurement of what Nigeria's inflation rates should be? Mr. Shopito, okay. can you hear me? Okay, Mr. Obele, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All, all right, while, while we try to reconnect with, with Mr. Shopito, okay. please, please go ahead. Just a minute. Mr. Shopito, can you hear us? Okay, um, Mr. Obele, over to you now, please. So, um, yeah, first of all, we, uh, like I mentioned, it's, yeah, the efficiency basket is a big issue and it's a conversation that we are not even ready for because uh, we are focusing so much on the numbers and their insignificant growth, in my own opinion, than what really makes up for inflation that we are leaving out of the conversation. Okay. So, um, yes, as Mr. Sopito has said, a lot of these are standard at school models, which I was trying to say earlier on, they are standard at school models that a lot of stakeholders are keeping a track on. However, um, if you look at the U.S. Bureau of Analysis, you see that, Bureau of Statistics Analysis, you see that the inflationary basket is always constantly being reviewed. And that's one of the major challenges I've had with the Nigerian economics, in the sense, how we think and do economics in Nigeria. It's the same conversation with the state's VAT and central collection of VAT, all right? That you have a particular model or basket of things, in a sense, does not necessarily mean that that model or that basket or that situation cannot be reviewed. Inflationary basket is just simply a collection of items that you track every month, all right? And then when you aggregate, you say, okay, this is the headline inflation, this is the core, and this is the food inflation, this is food inflation. So we need to review that basket. And that borders heavily on the, on the culture around how flexible are we? Are we really ready to go through the intellectual rigor, all right, and stress, stress of, you know, trying to redefine that basket, all right, and rework our measurement patterns? The same thing to the Nigerian GDP, all right? If you look at services on the Nigerian GDP block, a lot of people would not agree with what I'm saying. It still doesn't capture the real state of services in Nigeria. You just see IT and communication. What is IT and communication? That's broad, that's big. Now you have software development, you have cloud computing, you have Microsoft database, you know, all these interesting dynamics. And how are we capturing for all those things within the GDP structure? All right, so we need to rework our methodology. And it's not just for inflation basket, for every other thing else, all right, GDP, poverty, and all that. Look at the Nigerian population, for instance. We are still dealing and arguing around the 2006 figures. Why are we doing that? Because we've not been able to define clearly what our methodology is. 
All right, and do not forget also, many of these reports are also funded by international organizations. Now, you may say that they are keeping a track, but do not forget that in their own home country, they are upgrading and updating these inflationary baskets, these methodologies yeah, and indices, all that. Yes. All right, so why they may not be interested in updating yours is a different conversation in itself. But I am saying that in 21st century economic thinking, inflationary basket must be updated every 10 years because globalization is happening, all right? Technological advancements are happening, consumer lifestyles are changing, and everything is happening. So with COVID-19 effect now, that's a major milestone to even review the inflationary basket. So, Mr. Obele, so this is an important Yes, point. I want us to get practical now. Now, you, you've now let us know the importance of a you know every 10-year review or decade review of our inflationary basket we know that food really comprises the majority um, of our inflationary basket um can you tell us what you suggest should be included you know the components of the economy that should be included into what we track to measure inflation over time so when you look at food for instance in the first place all right we need to break down the value chains for that all right, there's a growing arm of processed food, there's a growing arm of natural healthy living and all of these things. So every food component in those spaces must be included. Okay. That's one. When you think of technology, like I mentioned earlier, phones, gadgets, laptops, headsets, and all of these interesting dynamics, all those things must be included. When you think of services, cost of training, cost of um, accessing opportunities, all those things can be, can be, you can put a metric or proxy metrics to those things and capture them in the inflationary basket. All right. A standard way to look at what can be included in the inflationary basket because of time is to look at the, the US Bureau of Analysis um, inflationary basket and begin to extract information from those things and add to us as well as review. But to a large extent, it's not as much as the, the big question here is not really what we should be including, it's the culture of flexibility and rigor to upgrade the basket. That is where the major issue is. Just like saying Nigeria needs infrastructure, but you don't have the political will to fix infrastructure. That so, is a big concern. So, so um, on, on the bigger picture now, when we look at this um, question of you know this inflationary uh, basket, um, when it comes to the Nigerian situation, how can we you know put in this culture? What do we need to do? Do we need stakeholders? to come together for a meeting? Is this something we need to look at the MPC meeting, stakeholders meeting? What, what, what kind of setting do you feel that we need to have these conversations on the national level beyond on the media? All right, so uh, in my own opinion, the same reasons why you have education, the education sector and many other sectors, in fact, the so-called agricultural sector that people are pumping so much money into, the sole reason why you have low gross level development in those spaces is the same reason why you still have the same issues in the inflationary basket scenario and even the GDP methodology scenario. And what, what is that major issue? We, we are not really innovative people in a sense. And that's because with innovation comes the need for change. It questions status quo, all right, you know, and, and many other things. So the political will, the institutional will, even if you have the institutional will, do you have the institutional capacity? Hmm. All right. Are we really a people who engage high level statistical modeling and all of these inputs? Yeah, we may have a few people who can do that within the systems. But how many of those people do you have at a very um, large scale? All right. That cannot take a significant level of these changes I want to see. All right. And with the political economy, but willing to approve of all of these changes, would they understand the hmm. desire, the need for all these things? All right. It, we're not saying anything different from what's happening in the policy space. All right, these are the big questions that surround the policy design as well. All right, our policy design is so ineffective and really poor in this climate. Mm -hmm. So we're not a people who are giving, look at the educational sector, how many students really do their projects themselves? And these are the next couple of leaders. So are, are we really an intellectual and cerebral society that is giving to questioning the status quo, rethinking change, enabling change, and building institutions that cannot take the capacity for change? All right, and ensuring that um, the right um, um, legal frameworks and all of these things are in place to effect that change. Okay. So these are the big softer issues, like I mentioned earlier on, that we need to look at, not just um, um, the change itself that okay. needs to happen. All right, Mr. Obele, just one question before I turn back to Mr. Shopito. Um, when you look at the inflationary basket that we use here in Nigeria, and the fact that it doesn't exactly capture every sector of the Nigerian economy, would you say that our inflation figures by the MBS is not giving us the complete picture? I confidently say so. Yes, it doesn't. Hmm. 
just the way I will tell you that the GDP doesn't give us a full, the full picture. If you look at, if you, if you download the GDP Excel sheet, or even the inflation Excel sheet, look at those numbers line item by line item. The Nigerian economy is very complex than what those reports represent, all right? And the breakdown of those reports themselves. Things have really gone decentralized, all right, and broken down into bits, all right, that we are trying to really centralize and, and report them from a holistic perspective. All right, we need to go down into the specifics and break them down. So it's it's a complex situation, and I don't think the reports capture. That's the same way the, the population reports do not capture. That's the same way that there's a, there a huge informal economy. Now, how do you capture the an economy that is over 60% informal? How do you capture that sect into the, your inflationary numbers? These are the big questions. And that's why I would still say that in as much as an average Nigerian citizen does not really understand these dynamics and they need to be educated, they are also right in their own understanding. They are also right because you have 60% of the economy in the informal space. You have 60% of economic activities flowing through the informal space. 60% of foreign exchange dynamics flow through the parallel market. So the argument for exchange rates all right, it's being powered by the parallel market and the official market. Your CBN, Inara, and all that is an argument for the official market. What is the argument for the informal or unofficial or parallel market? These are the markets that define the, 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 change, the, the changes that we see and, of course, the numbers that we see in the real-time space. And our inability right. to capture that... All right, and, and let me also stay here that the FRS and some significant bodies have developed models to begin to capture taxation or taxes in the informal space. So these things are not impossible. Some institutions are already doing that already. All right, and until we begin to rethink all these things, we are under reporting. That's the word. Mm -hmm. I'm all not right. going to say the reports um, are wrong. We are we... under reporting the current story of things. The same way with poverty, it's been under reported. Other, um, human capital development is still being under, in fact, unemployment. The Nigerian unemployment numbers and underemployment numbers are way higher than we are, we are reporting. All right. So we are Bef before we go back to yeah, before we go back to Mr. Shopitan, I, I want you to stay, uh, Gospel Billy, stay on this um, um, you know this discussion on underreporting figures. Um, Mr. Shopitan earlier mentioned that it, it's impossible or it's you know not very likely to falsify um, the figures being put out by the NBS. Um, so. Yeah, and he also said, you know, that it looks like very likely by the end of the year and, of course, in the first quarter of next year, these inflation figures very likely will start to rise again. Um, so, Mr. Obele, I want you to speak, um, you know, more on falsifying figures as possibility or maybe, you know, continuation of under-reporting. Um, if we get to the first quarter of 2022 and we still do not see, um, you know, inflation figures rising as a result of the um, exchange rate today, um, what would you blame for that? Would you say that, you know, it's still the CBN doing a great job? Or maybe the figures don't seem very, very correct. So, yes, um, when Mr. Sopichon said that it's very unlikely they are falsifying, he was correct as well, because the issue is that it's not an intention to falsify. It is the structure or the methodology that makes the thing, figure look as though, all right, they are wrong vis-a-vis -vis the current state of things. Yeah. So there are two different things. So just like you want to say there's information, there's misinformation, and there's disinformation. They are all three different things, all right? So they are not they are not necessarily seeking to falsify those numbers, all right? But rather, the structure of the, the, the model through which those numbers are being computed are a bit 10 years or a decade backward. So the numbers come out as though they're being falsified. Now, having stated that, we also need to understand that a lot of inflationary numbers and all these things are not reported on real time. When I mean real time, I mean that there's a lag. So you, ha you have, what we're, what we're talking about right now is the August inflation, I think, yeah. yeah. So we have that one month lag. But even at that, one month is still not as significant in a sense. Because if you look at GDP, unemployment, and purchasing managers index and inflation, we're recomm it's highly recommended that the average analyst or person doing business should look more into the inflation and the PMI indicators because they are a true reflection of the economy than the GDP. Because the GDP is being reported like um, a quarter before, all right, but inflation is usually a month before. So they are closely correct variables than the GDP variables in quotes. So 
So it's not necessarily a situation of seeking to falsify, all right? Now, the reason why the dynamics may change in January is because for every festive season, all right, the market sort of redistributes and it could, it could play out on the numbers as it were. But in this case, I really don't see the um, exchange rate dropping. And if at all inflation will drop, it will still be at this 1%, 0.5%, 1% insignificant drop in my opinion, which I think we should stop putting an argument on. All right, because until those drops are significant, then nothing is really happening in the sense. Because let's not forget that 60% of what's happening is not even being captured and it's in the informal space. Okay, all right, back to uh, Shagun Shopiton. Um, and let's take a, you know, a, a, a break from the inflation direct and talk about the exchange rate. Um, it's currently 500 and, you know, 60 above, you know, some say 62, some say it might hit 65 uh, by the end of today and even further. Um, tell us about your fears with regards to the exchange rate. What seems to be going on? It seems um, very, very chaotic over there. Um, you know, I mean, the fears are uh, the same fears that are shared by everybody. And, you know, if, if you operate within the Nigerian economy, um, you definitely have to be worried at what's happening. Two things. Um, one is what's happening in the parallel market. And then the other is what's not happening in the official markets, in the official windows. Um, um, so as it stands, you know, like you reported, as of today, exchange rates in the parallel market has hit 562 naira to the dollar. And, you know, if you cast your mind back just six months or seven months, you know, that number would have seemed preposterous. Yeah. Um, because we were still running at about 4, 475 and then we hit 490. Um, and now we're talking 5, 562. And there's a very, very good chance that before the end of the year, we'll hit 600. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's deeply disturbing, given that, you know, as has been repeatedly said, we're consuming, you know, we're, we're, we're consuming economy, we're net consumers, we don't produce. Right. So the only thing and we, we, we import everything we consume. So the only thing that's going to happen is that prices are going to keep going up. Um, so that there's that. And then now there's also now the conversation around the policies that the central bank, you know, has been following with regards to the foreign exchange um, um, uh, rate management, exchange controls and policies. Um, this continued insistence of the central bank to maintain multi a multiplicity of exchange rates is a concern. Um, the fact that the, 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 the gap between the parallel market rate and the official exchange rate, the NAFEX rate, which as at yesterday was still around 412 naira to the dollar. Yeah. You know, that is an incredible 150 naira, you know. Um, yeah, and, and why, why is that? Because I remember years ago, it was maybe a 10, 20 naira difference. So how, yeah. we, how have we gotten to 150? You know, you know, it's, um, it's so terrible. Uh, so we've been talking about convergence, trying to converge, you know, the official and the parallel market rates. And every CBN administration, for as long as I can remember, has always tried to grapple with this challenge. And at a point, we were succeeding. Um, what I think has happened in this case is the 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 artificial controls that the central bank has continued to, to hold on, on, on exchange rates, um, the discretionary application of the multiplicity of rates across different sectors. So what, what that has done is that, you know, um, um, Forex is available to certain sectors at a particular rate. It's, it's available to other sectors at another rate. And then there are players within the system that can access those rates and use them in the unofficial market. So you are creating an arbitrage opportunity for powerful people, people that are, have connections. And there is no way that that arbitrage, because we are all capitalists by nature, if I have access to those opportunities, I will use them. Nobody is altruistic, nobody is thinking about the, the global peace and the good of the world. Everybody is thinking first about themselves, self-interest, and then about the good of others. So if I have access to exchange rates at 350 naira, for example, to the dollar, and I know that if I get those dollars and I can be creative, then I can go sell them, you know, in the parallel market, you know, then clearly I will do that. 
And I think that even the ex uh, CBN governor had made that point strenuously that, you know, these um, policies are simply creating terrible imbalances, um, you know, within the system. And, and it's, it's just been all sorts of havoc. The latest one that the CBN has done is, you know, this ban, you know, I won't say ban, you know, restriction of um, access by the BDCs yes. to, to, to the official, you know, um, um, window. And what that has done is it's further strangulated the supply side in the unofficial window because we all know that the BDCs, even though they're, they're only supposed to um, provide um, dollars or foreign exchange to, to consumers based on presentation of documentation and at a specific rate. But we all know that once the BDCs get this money, they put them in the parallel market streets and they are running at parallel market rates. So once you've taken them off the table because you want to prevent them from taking advantage of the arbitrage opportunity you created in the first place, then you are worsening the supply side mm. question. And the only thing that can happen is that exchange rates will get worse. All right. Mr. Shopito. There's a lot of confusion in the, in the exchange rates uh, uh, policies mm. of the CBN right now. And it's as we can all see now, it's chaos. Indeed. Um, I want to get final thoughts on this. Um, Mr. Obele first and you, Mr. Shopito. Um, so, Mr. Obele, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, you've talked about um, fiscal policies and the need for synergy between the fiscal and monetary side um, to balance up Nigeria's economy. But your final words, please, on what we can do as a country to lower our inflation rates and achieve a stable economy. Yes, I'll still go back to the four things I mentioned earlier on, uh, which was I started with the number one structure. We need the right structures to uptake the level of growth and significant decline in these scary numbers, as well as in, uh, the impact on livelihoods, all right, the positive impact on livelihoods. So once the infrastructure is in place, and um, the numbers will drop, once security is in place, those things will drop, and then the prices in the marketplace will drop, and all of that, incomes can become more significant. So the structure, and with structure also, we're also talking about uh, growing a productive base for the economy. The okay, Mr. Obele. we're talking about. Yes, Mr. Obele, um, could you wrap up in 30 seconds, please? All right, so structure number one, uh, behavioral patterns, consumer behavioral patterns, institutional capacity and effectiveness is also very important then the right policies and alignment between um, the fiscal and the monetary side. These are four major areas that I believe that they can be complementary enough in, in reducing these numbers. If you take out one of those four, one of those four, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a gap somewhere in its execution. All right. Mr. Shopito, final words from you regarding stabilizing our economy. I yes. think that what I think yes, sorry, sorry about that. I think that what our authorities need to do right now is to focus more on the fundamentals, and I think that's the point that Mr. Bailey has been making. Right, the most critical challenge and job for this government and any other government we will have in the next ten years is to um, is to is to is to um, address uh, the revenue distribution structure of the economy at the moment from this dependence on foreign exchange. Until we break that, our economy will not develop and will not grow. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much, um, Shagun Chopitan, um, an economist, and of course, uh, Gospel Billy also, uh, for both uh, joining us and sharing your, th your thoughts um, very, very brilliantly on the discussion today. Thank and you we both. We wish you a very interesting Thursday ahead. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. And this Thank is where. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This Thank is where we will be wrapping up this morning. Um, has been a very interesting conversation. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Remember to where to catch up uh, with uh, any of the conversations you may have missed. Mm -hmm. It's all on social media at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Exactly. Thanks again for joining us this very beautiful Thursday, so the 16th of September 2021. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon.